In this module, we'll review some of the concepts around debt service coverage, but spend most of our time focusing on why clients might have a hard time demonstrating or even having enough cash capacity to qualify for a loan and give you some strategies on how you can help your clients improve their cash capacity. If you're working with very small businesses, micro businesses, they're going for a micro loan, which is generally under $50,000. Just remember that what lenders are looking for is they're going to be looking at just the last few months, maybe up to a year of history, and they may rely largely on bank statements. And they'll look at both personal and business sources of income for calculating cash capacity. If you're working with larger or more established businesses that are looking for larger loans up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's when the analysis shifts more to the business, at least you start to move that way towards can the business pay the loan back, you'll be looking at a much deeper look into the history of the business two to three years. And there's going to be heavier reliance on financial statements such as profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Just remember that cash capacity or debt service coverage is one of the five C's that lenders use to determine whether to approve a loan application. It's a measure of cash flow available to service debt obligation. So they're looking to see if there's enough cash to pay a new loan payment with a little cushion. It's calculated as a ratio of cash to debt service or loan payments. And lenders like to see historic ability to repay debt. However, some mission-based lenders are willing to use projections, even if, if the business doesn't show ability to pay this new loan in the past, they're willing to look at projections. But as you go up into larger loans and into more conventional lenders, profitable history is going to be more and more important. We don't want borrowers or our clients taking on loans they can't afford. So we definitely want to make sure they do have the money to pay this loan. And doing some of these initial calculations, even in a back of the envelope way, is a great way of making sure that the client is in a position to take on extra debt. So as I said, if you're working with the larger businesses looking for larger amounts of capital, make sure that you've got two or three years of financial statements, good, clean profit and loss statements, ideally a balance sheet and, and tax returns that look like they jive with the information in the financial statements. That's going to be a critical part of you being able to do this analysis and getting your client approved with a lender. And with the smaller or younger businesses that are more in the micro loan area or size of loan they're trying to access, there might be much heavier reliance on bank statements. So pull those and we'll talk a little later in this module about how to make sure those are clean and in good shape for a loan application. If you find out that the ratio is too low, there really isn't enough cash to pay for the new loan. It's important to take the next step and say, okay, what's going on here? What's the problem? Why is there not enough cash to cover this? So here's a list of some of the things that could be the stumbling blocks. It could be that profits and excess cash are just low. Uh, I said sometimes the result of being low income. Many of us are working in low, moderate income communities and populations, and certainly just being low income can be that there isn't enough cash to cover the new loan payment. However, to qualify for a loan, this is going to have to be addressed. So as you go through this module, just keep thinking about ways you can help folks who are in this position improve their cash capacity to qualify for a loan. It could be that there just isn't good documentation. Again, this is very common with young businesses. If we're working with folks who just haven't been exposed to bookkeeping and banking and other kinds of formal systems, it could be that they have plenty of cash, but they just have don't have it written down anywhere in a way that a lender could verify what their cash situation is. It could be that they don't have good cash management strategies, and I'll talk about that later. It could be that there's plenty of cash, but they're taking it under the table. They're not depositing it. They're collecting cash and spending it right away on the business or personal expenses. So again, there's money there, but it's not showing up on any documentation. Or it could be that they just haven't really learned yet how to use debt and the cash that they have have been used in less than optimal ways in terms of how they've taken on debt or how they've used their cash. And I'll talk about this in a couple of slides about how you can look at this and help your clients understand some of these better. So you've looked at your client's documentation, you've done a little 
initial analysis on uh, debt service coverage and you see that there isn't sufficient and coverage, and then you start to get a sense of what are the issues. And then once you've identified some issues, of course, we'd like to help our clients address them. So generally, these are kind of the four pots of issues that can arise and then strategies you can come up to address them. So you could be that you just have to improve profitability. Again, just not enough sales, not enough bottom line money. They haven't been managing their cash wisely. So let's put in some better cash management strategies. Documentation isn't there. Let's improve our documentation. And if there's cash that isn't showing up anywhere, let's make sure we capture all sales someplace so that we can prove to a lender that there really is cash available. And let's take these one by one. The first reason that there may not be enough debt service coverage is that sales are just too low. I did a lot of financial analysis with very small businesses in my community years ago. And I used to say, you know, all financial analysis leads to marketing kind of as a joke because so many of the people I work with simply needed to increase sales to have enough excess cash to either take home the owner's draw they needed and or to qualify for a loan. So if your client just seems to not have enough sales, certainly coming up with a robust marketing plan, helping them step into digital marketing, whatever the case may be, could be the solution to the excess cash problem. Pricing can be a big issue with younger small businesses. They underprice, they don't really take their costs into consideration, they're not maintaining their margins, their margins are paper thin, but their volume is low. There's this whole kind of pricing volume margin analysis you can do and help them make adjustments so that there's just more profits being generated. I will say also, and this is my experience of working directly with business owners, women have a tendency to underprice their services. So if it seems like there's some gender issues there, I suggest you look at that and say, hey, look at your competition is pricing at this level. You know, why aren't you pricing up there as well? So looking at pricing and margins is a really important part of this excess cash calculation. Efficiency, if, especially if you're working with product-based businesses. Often very small product-based businesses are very inefficient. They're working out of their house. They're working out of their home kitchen. However they're operating, it could be that it's very hard for them to work efficiently. So their costs are high. Their volume is low. They're spending a lot of time just moving stuff around. If there's any way, I've worked with a lot of food-based businesses that just going from their kitchen to renting a commercial kitchen one day a week or something to produce their food product made all the difference in the world because they have commercial gear, more space, they can be organized, and it made all the difference in them being able to just work efficiently. So anything like that will improve the bottom line. If they happen to have expenses that just look just out of line for what size business they are, or what level of development they're at. I, I worked with one business owner who just had this penchant for like pricey, you know, storefronts, and she just didn't have the sales volume to uh, justify it. So anything like that you can see to reduce their overhead would be helpful. And then the final one, which is super important for our small micro businesses is include other sources of income. Make sure the lender knows if there is a spouse who has a pretty good job and there's enough money in the, just from the paycheck to not only cover household expenses, but there's some left over every month, make sure the lender knows about that, that there's other sources of income besides just the business that can contribute to the household cash capacity and the lender can take that into consideration for their analysis. So perhaps there's enough cash, but it's not being managed wisely. Some of the strategies that are on this slide are a little tricky. They're easier to do with a business that has a balance sheet. This is kind of balance sheet cash management strategies, but do your best to apply these with your businesses that don't have a balance sheet and see if this is part of the problem. So for example, sales and collections. There was a time when sometimes people would bill a client for services and wait 30 or 60 days to get paid. If you happen to be working with a business that seems to be waiting a long time to get paid, that's cash that's not available to them to demonstrate to a lender that they've got money to pay for a loan. So getting paid quickly, getting paid right away, getting paid in cash, so to speak, or direct deposit into, into the checking account, quick sales collections is a great way to improve cash position if that's a problem. Inventory. If you're working with a product-based business that has a fair amount of inventory, 
It does happen sometimes where they just collect too much inventory. And inventory, you can almost look at inventory as stacks of cash sitting on the shelves. In other words, you've spent money to buy the inventory, but you haven't turned it into a sale. And it can be like a bottleneck in some businesses. I work with a woodworker who made beautiful things. And I understand why he did this. But whenever he came upon interesting wood, he'd go and buy it. And he had this huge inventory of wood, which I, I, I know why he wanted all this specialty wood, but it was money that was sitting in his garage in his inventory and it had used up a lot of his money. So if there's any way to you know, sell off inventory and keep inventory lean, that's going to improve cash availability in the business. Payables. Again, this is kind of a balancing act because sometimes if you buy in bulk and you have enough inventory, you get a lower price per unit, but then you've used up a lot of your cash. But if there's any way that you don't prepay, that you look for credit, you kind of stretch out the cash available on your payable side, that can be helpful. Financing. This is a really common mistake small business owners make. They go and use their precious cash to buy a fixed asset or large equipment. This is sort of cash management education. You say, no, we save our cash for operations and we finance fixed assets and large equipment. So definitely try to do your financing on things that are going to take time to pay off and preserve all precious cash for operations. And that will show up on the bottom line eventually that there's more cash available in the business. And finally, owner's draw. Uh, work with your business owners to figure out how much owner's draw they can actually afford. I worked with these two women who had like an applique business where they could applique logos and names on t-shirts and baseball hats and things like that. And they did the right thing. They capitalized their business with an initial investment and bought the machinery and supplies because they didn't understand how this worked. They thought, oh, we can just pay ourselves uh, whatever it was, $1,000 a month owner's draw no matter what. And I worked with them and said, no, your, your business can't afford to pay you that much owner's draw yet. And you're just eating through your initial cash capital investment. So you need to look at what the bottom line profitability is and say, what can the business afford to pay the owner? Of course, again, if we're working with low income clients, it can be challenging because they need every penny just to keep their households going. If there is room to have the conversation to say, look, your business can't afford to pay you that much yet and your spouse has a job so we can kind of cover the household this way. In the meantime, let's leave some of this cash in the business because it will help us qualify for a loan. That's another conversation you might have. So all of these are kind of a little more challenging concepts, but are ways to improve the cash availability for this debt service coverage analysis. So we've talked about this a lot. I know we've talked about documentation a lot, but it's just the the thing of it with small business loans is that documentation is really important. And many of our small businesses don't have good documentation. So this in and of itself could be the problem with this debt service coverage. So if your client is not tracking income and expenses, that's you got to just address it. We've got to get track all sales. We've got to track your expenses. And this should be easier in this day and age. Back when I was doing this, uh, only really had to have a desktop or laptop kind of program for this. But now there's a lot of mobile app services out there and you can research them and find out which one you think is easiest or best for your clients. And virtually all our clients, if they don't have a computer, they will have a phone and they should be able to do almost all their bookkeeping now with a smartphone. The other side of this is then train yourself on how to use that app, not just how to mechanically use the app, but take a class on small business bookkeeping. If you're in the capital access business in any way, shape or form, you really need to know bookkeeping. So I strongly recommend investing in that skill set for yourself. You can also help your clients, again, with that good checking account management, making sure they have one business and one personal, that they keep all the expenses square between the two, that there's no bounce checks, none of those insufficient funds, nothing screams of lack of cash capacity to a lender than bounce checks. And they call them NSF, not sufficient funds, notifications on a bank statement. And also, again, with the credit cards, if your client is in a position to have credit cards, make sure they have one for their personal expenses and one for business and make sure they're using them appropriately and keeping all that separate as well. When I was working with people helping them set up QuickBooks, 
I would go in there and say, ah, we've been using QuickBooks for years. And I'd go look, I'd pull, you know, a PL and a balance sheet, and I'd see them riddled with errors that they didn't really understand bookkeeping. And so unfortunately, they were kind of useless. And if anything, they would just signal to a lender that this person didn't know what they were doing. So make sure those reports are clean, that they're following standard bookkeeping rules, and that you fix any problems. Or in some cases, you kind of have to start over if there's just too many mistakes. But uh, don't send anybody to a lender with a bookkeeping that's been mismanaged and the reports aren't usable because that will certainly just undermine their ability to qualify for a loan. If they're really well managed on their phone, they should be able to create documents and send them from their phone. But if there's anything you can do to help your clients scan and digitize their documents or train them how to do it. There actually are apps you can digitize documents uh, with your camera. And instead of turning them into a picture, they're turned into a PDF. And do that kind of research because this whole document, electronic document thing is one of the biggest hurdles for some of the communities we want to help and serve with capital access. And we've talked about this before, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate that capturing all sales is super important. And we work with informal businesses, businesses that maybe don't have quality tracking systems, or, you know, folks who, again, who have not been well integrated into the banking system, and they're just used to dealing with cash. They get cash from their customers, they buy their supplies with cash, and those sales aren't written down anywhere. So, if you work with people that say, oh, if I track my sales, I have to pay taxes, you know, there is sort of an education piece here to say, look, if you get to a point where you owe taxes, that's a good thing because it means you're profitable. And we want to demonstrate and document profitability and tracking expenses because if they deposit all sales, but somehow don't track expenses, that's going to overstate their profits. So it's, it's doing both sides of that equation that are super important. And as I said, if for some reason they have been sold extra checking accounts or extra credit cards, help them consolidate and clean up their checking accounts so that they can present something simple and clean to a lender. If you're a business coach or business development organization, you have a big role to play in educating your clients and helping them improve their cash capacity for qualifying for a loan. And I hope this gave you some ideas of how to tackle that with them. But I also just want to make a final pitch that the only way you can really do this well is if your business bookkeeping skills are pretty good. And so I think this is one of the most important skills to invest in for yourself. If you're in this arena of uh, capital access is the nitty gritty of business bookkeeping, like really understanding it. One of the things I did when I was working as a SBDC counselor is I knew how to use QuickBooks and I helped about, I don't know, 50 or 80 businesses set up their bookkeeping. And boy, did I learn a lot. And I needed to know a lot in order to do that because every business is different. And every business kind of manages their cash different and their kind of sales and expense habits and patterns differently. And also it's based on their product or service structure, how they collect sales, all these kinds of things. So often when I helped people set up their books, I would kind of interview them on how they manage stuff. And then I'd set up their QuickBooks to parallel that. I would also turn myself into something of a sleuth. I could pull a PL and l balance sheet and look at it and start to see, is this clean? And they've been doing things right, or are there errors in here? Are these errors I can fix? Or are these errors we are so extensive, we have to kind of start over? We're not teaching bookkeeping in this series, but it's one of the critical skills you have in this whole kind of capital access set of skills. And particularly with that service coverage, it's it's one of the most important skills for you to have. So I know some of you are probably going, oh, bookkeeping, but it's really important. It can be actually kind of interesting. It's worth investing it on your team to figure out how to provide this service to your clients. Our next module is on collateral. This whole chapter has been on how to present the best version of the business to a lender. And we focused out of the five C's on just three of them, which was credit, cash, and the last one will be collateral. 